Are you sure? I'm not sure you sure. Because if you were sure, you wouldn't be hating the Muslims or the Buddhist or the Scientologist or the Hindu or them folks with a different color skin or those dirty people on the side of the street or the prostitute you saw on your town street the other night you the drug addict who's wandering around aimless you are you sure you know whosoever is maybe whosoever is uh, those nice clean people who comes into your path and and they don't offend you much that's who you believe God loves God loves whosoever whosoever believeth on him this verse also tells us what the objective of sending Jesus is God's objective for sending Jesus to the world is so that the world could believe in Jesus God wants the world to believe him and that's a tough assignment for someone to believe they need evidence they also need to have created in them a desire and they also need to, to create in themselves or you create in them a sense of benefit in other words I believe in this thing because it's going to do something for me belief is a very complicated thing to believe someone you must have empirical evidence you must provide information the ultimate goal of God is so that all of them could have eternal life what a verse of scripture everything's in it now so God so loved the world he said his son his son comes into the world because God sent him to the world the son comes to the world but he doesn't stay in the world because he comes to love or to show God's love for the world to show God's love for the world he devised a program to do that and the program was to create a group of people who would do that for God. Let me try it this way. God loved the world so much that he sent his son to create a mechanism so the world could be loved. Or feel the love or know the love and believe the love. It's not Jesus who loves the world. Jesus is the evidence that God sent to the world so the world could know that he loves it. The evidence came to create evidence so that the world could know that God loves it. What did this son create so the world could know that God loves it? <laughs> he created a group of people out of the world so that the world could know that God loves it. And he called this group of people church. As a matter of fact, uh, they're not called church. Uh, called out group means church are you following me so what God actually did was he sent his son his son sent the church
you to get this now. Therefore, the purpose for the church is to prove to the world that God loves it and to love the world for God. We ain't doing too well. I'm going to say it again. The purpose for the church is to love the world for God and to prove to the world that God loves it. Now what we have done, this thing called church, we believe that our purpose is to go to heaven, to leave earth, to abandon the world, to hate sinners, to avoid the world, to don't mix with the world, to despise the world, to condemn the world, to rebuke the world, to treat the world as less than important, to, to not associate with the world. We, I mean, we do the complete opposite to everything God wants us to do with the world. We actually hate the world that God loves. Do you know that that we are showing the world the opposite of what God wants to show the world? God wants to show the world what? His love. What's the church doing? We love in ourselves. A church service is a self-pity party pretending to have a good time. We spend more time complaining in church services about what God ain't doing for us than we do doing what God told us to do. So we need to regroup and stop what we're doing, back up a little bit, and see if we can get our mandate back. The mandate is what? Go ye into all the world. Now, watch this. God loves the world, so he what? He gave, he sent his only son. His son so loved the world, he did what? He sent his only church. Do you see that? God sent the son, the son sent the church. God sent the son to the world, the, the son sent the world to the church to make the church to the world. So, so the church is supposed to be God's evidence that he loves the world. Well, look at John chapter 3 verse 17. The other verse. Why does Jesus, after he tells us how much God loves the world, in verse 16, he rushes to tell us what we shouldn't do to the world. Let's read it. For God sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world. Now that's exactly what the church is doing. I mean, he quickly puts in this important correction or caution. What a God. For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world. Why? Because God loves the world. How can you condemn something you love? You are either schizophrenic, insane, or crazy. I love you, that's why I hate you. I mean, that's how, it, that's how we work it. I love you, but you ain't good for nothing. I love you, but you ain't worth it. Are you confused? For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him the world through him might be saved and then he comes and he creates this body called the church 
and he becomes the head of it. So that the world through him, who's him? This body with this head. Christ is called the head of the church, which is his body. So that the world through him might be saved. That means the world is supposed to be saved, not through really the head, but through the body. The church. That's why the head left. Hallelujah. So how are you doing in your workplace? How come people don't like you? How come when you show up, people run? Oh boy, here comes those crazy Christians again. Let's go. Oh, here he comes again, all this Jesus stuff. Uh, let's leave. That's exactly what they say about you at work. Your family scatters when you go to visit. Come on, talk to me. Something's wrong here. Tell me, how come they don't like you and they love Jesus? Are you supposed to be loving them for him? Do you know it's amazing? For God so loved the world, he sent who? His only begotten son. And what does his son do? Makes the world love him. How did he do that? By showing the world he loved them. I mean, the prostitutes love this guy. The children love this guy. The rich love this guy. The poor love this guy. Females love this guy. Males love this guy. Wine bibbers love this guy. Tax collectors love this guy. Roman soldiers love this guy. Everybody loved him. Why do they hate you? Because you ain't doing something right. You don't know how to love the world. As a matter of fact, religion, Christian religion, has taught you that the world should be hated. That's why God hasn't come back yet. We don't love the world, be honest. What did they teach you in Sunday school, in church, in Bible study? What did they teach you? Handle not, touch not, taste not, come out from among them, be separated. Be peculiar, which really means superior. I mean, I remember when you used to be my friend. What happened since you were a Christian? You used to come down and visit me all the time. What happened? Am I scornful now? Wow. We don't know how to love the world. 21st century church must change. Let me make a few statements about the church. Number one, the church does not exist for heaven. <laughs> Number two, God does not want the church in heaven. Prove, prove, prove me wrong. Read your Bible and, and prove me wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. I dare you to tell me if I'm wrong. Find a scripture and tell me I'm wrong. If God wanted you in heaven, he would have killed you a long time ago. Quickest way to get there. <laughs> Number three. The church exists for the world. Number four, the church exists for the nation. <laughs> Number five, the church is assigned to the nation. Go ye into all the world and make disciples of the nation. That is the assignment. It's 
so the church belongs to the nation. But we hate the nation. We despise the nation. We, we condemn the nation. We wish the nation would just go to hell. Literally. Why? After all, we're straight. We're saved. Our kids are saved. Our husbands saved. Wives saved. Dogs saved. Our cats even anointed. We, we're just ready to go to heaven. We, God forbid. The assignment of the church is to reconcile the world back to God. Jesus said, Matthew 28, verse 18, Go ye into all the world and make disciples of what? All nations, and then baptize them into the authority of God, which means name. Give them back the authority of God. Write this statement down, please. This is the most profound statement that you could ever be given. Here's a statement. Sinners are not God's enemy. Wow. Everybody was born a sinner. Write this down. Second profound statement. Every sinner is God's son. I know you don't believe that by your, by your behavior, of course. You don't believe that. Every sinner is God's son. <coughs> I wish God would brainwash you with that. 